Hello and welcome to the Santa Barbara Cal Soap College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash calsoap. That's strivescan.com slash calsoap. I now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Ontario Tech University. Awesome, thank you so much, Jenny. So I'm just gonna share my screen here. So you should be able to see my screen now. Jenny, let me know if you can't, but hello everyone and thank you for watching. My name is Karen Dancy and I'm the Regional Market Development Manager with Ontario Tech University and your regional representative. So you are able to scan the QR code on the screen to connect following tonight's presentation or to find out more about our live and on-demand webinars, campus tours, and our virtual open house. So Ontario Tech University is a public mid-sized Canadian university located in Oshawa, Ontario. With over 90 programs across seven diverse academic faculties, Ontario Tech is a modern and innovative university that prepares students to make a positive impact in a tech-focused world. When we opened our doors in 2002, we had you in mind. All of our programs are tailored to this generation. Did you know that approximately 85% of the jobs that are going to exist past 2030 haven't even been invented yet? We've created this university with that in mind. And that's why all of our programs are career oriented. So I did wanna point out a few things about studying in Canada to start us off since we are a Canadian institution. So all of our degrees are accepted worldwide, including back in the United States, should you wanna return for work or graduate studies. We are also an affordable option for high quality education with our tuition starting around 22,000 US dollars per year. You are also able to work as an international student in Canada while you study, if that interests you. So Ontario Tech does have two campuses, both located in Oshawa, Ontario, which is about a 45 minute drive or train ride away from Toronto and about two hours from the Buffalo, New York border. With approximately 170,000 residents, Oshawa is one of Canada's fastest growing economies and it is a hub for innovation, sports and entertainment. Did you know that Oshawa has Canada's most successful junior hockey franchise? We're called the Oshawa Generals. And we're also located along the shores of Lake Ontario, so there's miles of waterfront trails to explore. Our reputation at Ontario Tech speaks for itself. Only just 20 years old, Ontario Tech has already made an international name for itself, and it is ranked the number one undergraduate university in Ontario for reputation and houses the number one library in Canada. Our business, computers, and IT and engineering programs also enjoy top rankings at the international level. Our students are also well supported as Ontario Tech is in the top three undergraduate universities in Canada for total research dollars. At Ontario Tech, we do offer programs across seven diverse faculties, including business, computer and technology, education, engineering, medicine and health, science and social science and humanities. You're able to explore them all today at ontariotechu.ca slash programs. Our programs are all relevant to today's market, ensuring that you're gonna be prepared in your field post-graduation. It's demonstrated by every single one of our programs having experiential learning opportunities, and it's showcased through our graduates who are very successful with employment right after graduation. Whether you wanna work right away or continue your education, you'll find out that your program and the experiences that you need to succeed are right here at Ontario Tech. In a nutshell, we're a 21st century university designed for a 21st century workplace. So we do team up with organizations, both local and abroad, to enhance your student experience and get you ready for your future. So we offer a range of credentials and experiential learning op opportunities to provide learner-centered educational options. But don't just take my word for it, check out some of our stats. Did you know that we are the number one university in Ontario for medical science grants and one of the only Canadian universities with medical pathways? We also offer over 5,000 women in STEM scholarships and have some of the highest ranked engineering programs in Canada. So now that you know a little bit more about what we offer, I do want to talk about how you can become an Ontario Tech Ridgeback. 
So just to briefly speak about our admissions process, as it is a little bit different than the United States. So we do not require the SAT or the ACT, and we do not require references or personal essays for most undergraduate programs. These are typically only required if you decide to apply to select optional scholarships. Undergraduate admissions is primarily based on your academic average. Keep in mind the important application deadlines as late applications are not accepted to our competitive programs. You are able to apply directly on our website at ontariotechu.ca slash international application. Now Ontario Tech is a large supportive community and the university continues to grow every day. These are just a few of the reasons that our students choose us from our smaller class sizes, appealing programs, well-known engineering faculty, our experiential learning opportunities and modern facilities, affordable tu tuition and our close-knit community, and many, many more spectacular reasons. We may not have ivy growing on our buildings just yet, but that's because we've been too busy breaking new ground. So now it's time for you to start creating your very own Ontario Tech Story. So we do offer live and on-demand webinars, as well as virtual tours, open houses, experience days, and live chats. You're able to check us out at ontariotechu.ca or just scan the QR code that's on your screen. You can also find us on social media. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. So you are able to hear directly from our students and faculty. And then lastly, if you did wanna connect with me directly, you're able to email me. My email is karen.dancy at ontariotechu.ca and I would love to get connected with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And a reminder to all of our participants that you can use that Q&A function on your screen to ask questions of our institutions here at any time. Up next, we have Drexel University. Hi, everybody. Just going to pull my screen up. Um, can you guys see that? I guess you'll let me know if you can't. Yep, it looks good. Great, beautiful, thank you. Um, great. So, Drexel University. Drexel University is um, an R1 research institution located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And what an R1 research institution means is that we have the highest ranking for research that an institution can obtain. Um, and it's part of probably one of the main focuses of our um, learning experience. We want all of our students to have research opportunities. And like I said, we are located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So here are just some like quick stats about Drexel. We have about 14,500 undergraduate students, which makes us a mid-sized university. Um, and we do offer over 80 undergraduate majors. And our student to faculty ratio is around 10 to one. We have a median class size of 19 students. And that might seem a little crazy considering we have 14,500 plus undergraduates. And um, the reason we're able to keep our class sizes so small is because at any given time, some of our students or a big chunk of our students are out on um, our cooperative learning experiences, which I will get to in just a few minutes. Drexel in our area has a little bit of a reputation of being um, an engineering school. And while we do have an incredibly strong engineering program, as I mentioned, we have over 80 undergraduate majors and we have plenty of minors across all of these colleges that are listed on the screen. So we have programs also just as strong in our business school. We have incredibly strong nursing programs. We have um, a really great media arts and design program. We have an incredible honors college that offers a lot of research opportunities. We also have great programs for veterans in our Goodwin College of Professional Studies. And we have a really incredible biomedical engineering department as well that offers great programs, great faculty, um, anything you could want really. And, um, as it says on the screen, this is where I'm going to talk about co-op. So Drexel is ranked number two for best internships or co-op programs by US News. And what co-ops are is it is a six-month full-time entry-level work experience 
in your field before you graduate. And many of our programs actually offer the opportunity to do three co-ops during your time at Drexel. And so what that means is while you're on these co-ops, you're not paying tuition, you're working in a full-time job and you're gaining real world experience in your field. When you come to Drexel, you are connected with a co-op advisor, you are given support to um, find your co-op, you're given support to um, write your resume, have um, interview experience, and um, we guide you every step of the way. And the great thing about co-op is it's not an internship. As I mentioned, it is a full-time paid entry-level working experience while you're in school. You're not paying tuition during that time. And so what that means is that by the time you graduate, you will have between six months and a year and a half of full-time work experience on your resume, which means that you'll often start not as an entry-level employee when you get your first job post-graduation, or um, you'll have made great connections at those previous co-op employers that about 94% of our um, graduates end up working for post-graduation. Um, I've listed a few um, up on the screen here. Comcast is a huge company based in, um, that has a huge office in Philadelphia that people do co-ops for. We also had a photography student do a co-op at Saturday Night Live and take the photos of the celebrity guest host that you see before and after the commercial break. So um, it's really kind of an invaluable experience that we offer at Drexel. And I think a thing that sets us apart from many other colleges and universities. Um, a little bit more about your college experience here at Drexel. While we do have that incredible co-op program, we do offer the classic college experience that everyone is looking for. We have division one athletics. We have an incredible basketball team. We have on-campus housing. This is a picture of one of our dorms. Over 300 organizations, student organizations based on interest, activities, affinity groups, professional organizations. Um, and if you came here and didn't see the organization you were hoping to find, we would help you start that. So um, a little bit about our application process. So we are on rolling admissions. Our transfer um, applications are accepted um, on a rolling basis, which means that we accept applications until about a month before the term starts. And Drexel is actually on a quarter system and not a um, semester system. So we have four 10 week terms as opposed to a fall semester and a spring semester. Um, and most of our programs do accept in fall and winter and spring. Some of them may only accept in the fall, for example, nursing. But as I mentioned, we accept applications and review applications until about a month before the program starts. So if you have questions about a specific program, please reach out to me. My email is up on the screen here and um, I can let you know all the information about those programs and when they admit. And as our transfer team, we don't have regional representatives. We actually have program representatives. So different people in my office work for different programs as opposed to a regional representative. So depending on the program you're interested in, I would either help you or find the person in my office who would be there to support you and get you connected with them. Um, we have a great website with all the information you could possibly want to find, um, it's drexel.edu. And um, another thing I want to mention is that we do consider all full-time on-campus transfer students for merit-based scholarship. Um, I know that is something else that sets us apart from other colleges and universities and how we deal with transfer students. So if you have any questions about that, also please um, feel free to reach out. And thank you very much. Thank you so much. Up next, we have the Columbus College of Art and Design. Hi, thank you. I'm just gonna share my screen here. Okay, so my name is Ellen Ellis. I'm the Director of Admissions here at Columbus College of Art and Design, or as we are better known, CCAD. Uh, we're located in Columbus, Ohio, 
Um, and we are an entirely visual arts oriented college. So if any one of you out there listening uh, this evening is interested in pursuing some form of a visual arts um, bachelor's degree um, and or career, career path, then we are a really great option for you. Um, just a few quick facts about us. We have been doing this for a long time. Uh, we just celebrated our 141st birthday. Um, and as I like to say, we are old, but that doesn't mean we're old fashioned. Um, in fact, um, some of our studio spaces and the technology that students learn and are equipped with as part of their academic experience at CCAD is top of the line, industry grade and cutting edge. Um, so that is something that uh, you can look forward to at CCAD. Uh, we are also, we're small. We're about 1100 total students and that makes us a very tight knit community. Um, in downtown Columbus, we are basically our own little neighborhood. We're not you know, behind some kind of walled uh, facade or anything like that. We are about 10 buildings in a two by two city block uh, radius um, with 1100 students. So small class sizes, hands-on studio style learning um, in a community where everyone is coming to the table with this common bond and interest in the arts and making um, and creativity. We do have students join us from across the country and from around the world to pursue these bachelor's um, options. Um, you'll see the majors listed there on screen that we offer. You have some traditional pathways like fine arts, illustration, photography. Um, you'll see some more cutting edge fields like animation, um, comics and narrative practice, as well as our newest major, game art and design. And if you're someone who likes to work with your hands or thinks kind of dimensionally or spatially, maybe you'd be interested in a design degree um, like fashion or interior or industrial. Um, so these are our options uh, here at CCAD. Um, now, some things that are really special about CCAD, as I've mentioned, you're gonna have a predominantly studio style um, learning uh, program in a art centric community. Um, so that studio style learning um, means that it's very hands on. About two thirds of your coursework at CCD is that hands on approach of making, creating, problem solving, doing what you're most passionate about. You're going to be doing that in really um, technologically savvy studio spaces, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, to mention a few of those spaces, we've got the Fab Lab uh, with 3D printers, laser cutters, wire benders, um, and more. Uh, we have glass blowing labs, printmaking labs, um, certainly sewing, um, as well as many Cintiq computer style labs. One of the largest stop motion animation studios um, in the country on a college campus. Our students learn the software uh, that the industry wants you to know, making our students great candidates for internships and co-op opportunities and preparing them for creative careers. And that's what's on the screen before you now are some highlights of some creative careers um, that some of our graduates have pursued. So you've got Katura A. Bobo, who is a fine arts alum. Um, she now is a freelance artist who uh, paints, but also illustrates children's books like this one, I Am Enough. Um, you have uh, Dan Scanlon, who graduated and got his start um, on some of the early Pixar movies as a storyboarding artist. He um, actually helped um, and was the driving force behind Onward, um, the major motion picture by Disney Pixar. Uh, Lolly, Lolly Ceramics is a small ceramics business uh, founded by Lolly Stamps. Small in size, but not small in stature. Um, her mugs are now world known. Uh, when she drops a collection of mugs um, and ceramic pieces, they sell out in one minute flat. Her work has been now featured in Vogue, uh, magazine and on a number of blogs. So what are you going to make movies and write novels, design, you know, your own high-end footwear line or create your own comic book series? Again, the sky's really the limit um, here at CCAD with what we can help teach you um, and help expand your network. So we'd love to have you join our creative community. Um, these are some snapshots um, inside and outside some of our residence halls, the heart of our campus, our quad, uh, where students can you know, meet and organize, um, whether it's student government, uh, Black Student Leadership Alliance, um, the fashion club with you know, pop-up fashion shows happening throughout the year. You know, whatever you're interested in, you can learn about it academically and you can meet others who want to do the same too. Um, to get started, you will want to apply. Our application is open. 
Um, you can go to ccad.edu and click the apply now button there or connect with us at admissions at ccad.edu. We require a written essay, a proof of your GPA and a portfolio. If you have questions about the portfolio, it's usually the one application piece that has the most uh, mystery or questions behind it. Um, to put it you know, succinctly, we ask for eight to 15 pieces, and we really just ask you to show us the best of your creative pursuits thus far. We love, vari we love variety, originality. We certainly have an appreciation for technical skill, but don't feel like your portfolio has to demonstrate the major you wanna go into. We're excited to help teach you that. Um, so if you'd like a preliminary portfolio review to give some guidance, again, reach out to us at admissions at CCAD. .edu. Um, we'd love to see you apply. And we do offer um, a variety of transfer pathway options, uh, merit-based scholarships, endowment scholarships um, to transfer students, um, as well as um, uh, grants afforded by uh, the FAFSA, which you may be familiar with. Um, so I'm going to put some information in the chat uh, with my contact. And other, otherwise, we look forward to connecting with you at CCAD. Thank you. Thanks so much. And a reminder to all of our participants that you can use that Q&A function to ask questions of our schools here at any time. Up next, we have Rutgers University, New Brunswick. Hi, everyone. My name is Maria, and I am the Southern California-based regional representative for Rutgers University in New Jersey. It's um, in New Brunswick, New Jersey. So here are a few facts about the university. It's a top 25 public university in the US. Um, it's the number one most diverse school in the Big Ten Conference and one of the most diverse universities in the US as well. It's a large public research university with over 175 research centers and institutes on campus. And you can actually start doing research as early as freshman year if that interests you. So being a large public research university, it's similar to like UC Santa Barbara or UC LA. And so we have all the quintessential components that you might expect coming out of this type of university with over 750 student clubs and organizations, over hundred majors, study abroad, things like that. A little bit more about our location. So we're located in New Brunswick, as I mentioned, um, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and we're just 45 minutes outside of New York City on the train. So a lot of students take advantage of that location for sure, because there's so many industries in between New Jersey and New York, which means lots of great internship opportunities as well. So you can get a flight to Newark Airport. And um, from there, we're just 20 minutes to campus, which you can just hop on the train and be in, on campus or take a, you know, an Uber ride and be there in 20 minutes. So it's very easily accessible. We're also near the coast. We're about 35 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. So you don't have to sacrifice, you know, um, the ocean. Uh, but it's a little bit different from Santa Barbara in the sense that, you know, you have like all four seasons in the traditional sense. So we even have ski resorts nearby. You can take advantage of all the activities that all the seasons bring. So it's really fun. And the public transportation is really easy to get around as well. Um, next is a map of our campus. So here you can see um, the train goes, you know, um, to New York City and that runs right across the street from our campus. And then we have a bus system that can take you all around campus. It runs every few minutes and it's free for all students. So it's super easy to get around, very accessible. And um, the, the campus is big and there's a lot going on all the time. We also have like several different options for campus living as well. So anyone who wants to live on campus is guaranteed housing for the first couple of years. So here we have um, more facts about student life. So as I mentioned already, it's a large public university. So we have over 36,000 undergraduate students. We also have 24 NCAA Division I sports. Fun fact, the very first American football game in history was played on our campus. So there's a lot of really cool history. It's actually um, the eighth oldest university in the US. We have over 600 student organizations, over 80 fraternities and sororities, lots of philanthropic opportunities and lots of events going on on campus all year round, including concerts and festivals. So there's a lot going on all the time, which makes it a really cool place to be. 
We have seven first year schools. So when you apply to the university, you can choose up to three of these schools to apply to, and then you can be admitted into up to three, and then you can choose which one you wanna start with. So we don't admit based on major, but we admit based on school. So we have the School of Arts and Sciences, which houses the majority of our majors. And then we have some of the more specialized schools like the School of Pharmacy. That's a six year PharmD program, which is actually really rare. Um, we have the School of Engineering that has pretty much any type of engineering that you might think of. Rutgers Business School, Mason Grove School of the Arts, which is our arts conservatory program with very focused classes on you know, theater, arts, things like that. We have the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences and the School of Nursing. As I mentioned, we're not impacted and we don't admit based on major, but on school. So here we go about the individualized experience. We offer, um, even though you know it's a big university, we still have a 16 to one student to faculty ratio. And as I already mentioned, 175 plus research centers on campus. So um, if you wanna do research, it's a great place to do it. We also have school-based honors programs and a live-in honors college. And we're very committed to your success. One really special thing about our location is that we have a lot of major employers nearby and for pretty much any industry you can think of. So we have 650 employers visiting campus every year. We have some of the largest job fairs that you can find on a college campus. We have career exploration seminars, interview workshops and career counseling and an 84% placement rate within six months of graduating. Also, if you come in undeclared, like for your major, that's totally normal and fine. And so we offer these kind of services to help you figure out what you might want to do. Um, these are a few shots of our campus. So as you can see, there's a lot of school spirit at our sports games. Um, the campus is really beautiful. It has that classic East Coast look with the leaves changing color in the fall, you know, very green in the summer. Um, so it's really beautiful all year round. A little bit about how to apply. You can complete the Rutgers application on our website or the coalition application. Then you also will submit your self-reported academic record where you list your grades and um, your classes. We are currently SAT and ACT optional. Um, and then you and then that's it with the um, application fee. That's all we require. So we review holistically. So we're looking at your grades and your coursework. Um, we will look at your SAT or ACT if you send it. If not, there's no harm, no foul in that. Um, we look at your extracurriculars and your essay as well. And then we're reviewing you for scholarships at the same time. So there's no separate application for that. We have two deadlines. Early action has already passed, but December 1st is our regular decision deadline. And we will still accept applications afterwards, but you won't be considered for scholarships. And it looks like my time's up. So I'm going to wrap this up and I'll put my contact information in the chat. So feel free to reach out anytime. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Humboldt State University. There we are, couldn't find my mic. Hi and welcome everyone. My name is Jennifer and I'm an admissions counselor with Humboldt State University. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and then we'll get started on this presentation for you. I'm excited that all of you are here. So Humboldt State University, we are the most Northern Pacific school in the state of California. We're located about a hundred miles south of Oregon. And we have just a little under 8,000 students total in our school. 6,700 of them are getting their undergraduate degree. The rest are working towards their master's. We are one of the few schools in California that you can actually come over as an upper division transfer, a lower division transfer, and you can also come to us as a post-baccalaureate as well. So we have three academic colleges. I'm going to go through some examples of each one of those. The first one is the Professional College of Education. Uh, th that includes business as well as five options, including entrepreneurship. We are in the second year of a $2.5 million grant uh, to expand the work that we're doing in child development. Traditional majors like computer science, economics, physics, applied mathematics, Kinesiology, we have both the bachelor's and the master's for those that are interested in going into this area, both are non-impacted. And psychology, we have both the bachelor's and the master's for those that wanna go into research therapy or counseling, both programs are non-impacted. Our second college, the College of Natural Resources and Sciences at Humboldt. These are the folks that like to get their hands dirty. So majors like wildlife, wildland resources, our ag is called rangeland resources. 
We have oceanography, microbiology, marine biology, and zoology. Uh, unique outdoor majors like forestry, fire science, fire tech, fisheries, traditional sciences like chemistry, pre-pharmacy, biology, pre-med, uh, physics, geology, geography, as well as environmental resource engineering, which is very different from your typical civil, mechanical, or electrical. We wanna teach students how to build it and not have to rebuild it again in 20 years from now by utilizing natural resources within that area. Our third college that we have at HSU is the humanities and social sciences. This includes majors like theater arts, anthropology, archaeology, all of our dig sites are in our very own backyard. We're very fortunate for that. Traditional art, drawing and painting, design, dance. We have our own studio as well as uh, English communications, mass communication and journalism and film, as well as uh, different types of design, geography, as well as recreation administration. Uh, music, we have music education, music for uh, instrumental, and we even have our own marching squad called the Marching Jacks. We have a variety of different housing available on campus. There are no rules like you can't, you know, have your car or you have to live the first year on campus. We honestly know that where you're going to be the most comfortable is where you'll also be the most successful, both academically and personal socially. For full-time students, you're looking at a tuition of right around 3,700 a semester. So just a little, uh, about 7,500 for the entire year. Part of that tuition and fees pays for the busing and trolley system for the whole town of Arcata. We are actually first considered one of the greenest schools in California. Uh, and so there's lots of research on that. And come January, we're even gonna have a name change. We are actually going to be, uh, we've been deemed the third Cal Poly. So come January, we will be considered Cal Poly Humboldt. So more information on that to come. But for our students, we still accept the minimum GPAs across the board. So for our first time freshmen, you just have to meet uh, the normal eligibility index of the 16 core courses. We are not utilizing SATs and ACTs right now for admissions purposes, but you can use it to meet any type of remediation. And of course, you have to graduate from high school. For our transfer students, if you're normally eligible to come to a California State University out of high school, but you choose to go to a community college first to maybe get the first year out of the way or give it a try, you can do that. You just need your 2.0 GPA and be in good academic standing, can't do anything naughty, and uh, meet normal first-time freshman admissions requirements. Or you can decide to take care of all of your lower division work and come to us as an upper division transfer by also completing your golden four and 60 transferable units. This is how you can stay connected with us. A lot of our social media is student run, so that way students really get the perspective that they want, uh, you know, versus just us staff talking all the time. Uh, some key notes to realize is that um, we do accept students that, that are from uh, all over the state of California, as well as out of state and international. And it's, we are an HSI institution and actually mo almost 80% of our students get uh, pretty close to some form of financial aid, whether they fill out the FAFSA or DREAM Act application. But feel free to sit back and relax. I have a short video for you.
All right. So Jenny, back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our schools here today. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time out to let our participants know more about your institutions. Participants, you can still use that Q&A function to ask questions of our schools. And in the meantime, I'll invite all of our institutions back on screen and we'll have some um, Q&A of our own. All right, so we'll get started here um, with our first question. I'll pop it up on the screen here. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So you can share your nuggets of wisdom with our participants. We'll go in the same order and start with Ontario Tech. Awesome. So my biggest piece of advice is to think outside the box. Don't just apply to the schools that your friends are going to or that your family has gone to. Um, feel free to really discover what you're interested in, uh, what makes a school a good fit for you. Um, and if that means going out of state or even going out of the country, uh, definitely discover those, those options and know that at each school, there's going to be someone like each of us here that can help you through the process, even if it's new for you or your family. I definitely echo what Karen says. I think it's really important to not limit yourself. Um, I know a lot of college students or students in that process can get a little overwhelmed or, or listen to what other people are telling them about they what they should want or should do. I know I experienced a lot of that when I was in the college admissions process and then even when I was in college. Um, I think just really kind of connecting with yourself and being honest with yourself about what you want and asking all the questions. That's why each of us here has a job. It's to make sure that we help you make the best decision you can. Um, so ask any and every question you possibly can. There are no stupid questions in this process at all. Um, I think somewhat similar to what's been said so far. Um, yeah, don't you know discount um, college options. Um, you know, not just on location, as was mentioned earlier, um, but also um, don't discount too soon because of cost. Um, so many of our schools do have such widely, wildly varying price points. Um, some of that may include, you know, things like relocation possibly for you, uh, and where you're coming from and want to go to. Um, but each of us also have a, a whole wide array of scholarship opportunities and grants. Um, and so the starting prices that you see for some institutions is not going to be your individual cost of attendance. Um, so apply, put yourself out there. It's a, it's a scary process, but as everyone has said here, and I couldn't agree more, we're here to help. We really are. We want you to, to thrive. So yes. Rutgers New Brunswick. I actually don't have anything else to add. So <laughs> all right. <laughs> we're to move on to the next question. They they said it all. <laughs> all righty. Humboldt State, anything you want to add? Yeah, absolutely. So my piece of advice is a little different. Uh, I think that students should have the option of being picky. And so everybody has a set of criteria that you really should be basing your school off of. So I am a former first generation college student and I was a former foster youth. So my circle of what existed was only about two and a half hours from where I lived, which isn't a very big circle. So I think that when you search more widely, if you were to just search art, you're going to get everything on the face of the planet. So then how do you be more picky? My 17 year old self long, long ago when dirt was young and rocks were soft uh, was one, does the school have my major? Two, can I change my major? And three, what was the cost of attendance per semester, per year, times that by four for my four-year degree? And then based upon that, then I started looking at what are the other benefited criteria? Do I, am I near the coast? Am I near Redwood Forest? Am I near a totally different culture? Uh, and so everything that these ladies have spoken here tonight, the, it's all about that plantation formation of what is my criteria? And so I can look widely, but then I also have to funnel things down to what's going to fit you best at the end of the day. And so, and then one that you then funneled that down, 
you may then have your top three or your top four. And so you can say, I'm going to apply to these state schools, these private schools, these out of area schools, and have a top three in each category. And then of course, discuss that with your mentors and your family to help you in that funneling process. Absolutely. That's all great advice. And um, I'll add in something that I've heard in many of the sessions is to stay organized because there's so many different deadlines. Um, so if that's like a spreadsheet or a notes app on your phone, even um, and to have a dedicated email as well, that's like a professional email, um, you know, no, like Taylor Swift lover 2021 email, you know, just something more, uh, more professional as you as you start on your college career. So I'll add that in too, just because I think that's always um, good advice that I've heard as well. We have time for um, another question. So I'll go ahead and pull that one up. And that is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? So we have just a couple minutes. So before we end, um, you can share a fun fact or just something you want uh, to take away before we wrap up. Yeah, so I guess I'll start again. Um, so at Ontario Tech, yes, we are a tech school, but at the end of the day, almost every field, every industry deals with tech. So even if you are more into the arts or humanities or social sciences, somehow tech is gonna be incorporated there. And at Ontario Tech, our one underlying feature is that all of our programs teach tech with a conscience. So it's all about how can tech make our lives better uh, moving into the future and how we can do that ethically too. Um, so that's just a little fun fact about us. And once again, we're located in Canada, so don't be afraid to come north of the border. I think the, the thing I, I really want students to understand and get about Drexel is the benefit of our co-op program and how pretty much every program we offer includes that co-op option. Um, and to get that at least that six month or more time of full-time entry-level work experience while you're a student is something that um, I really cannot stress enough how valuable that is. And um, as I mentioned, we have students that are photography students that get to do that. We also have engineering students that get to do that, nursing students, psychology students. Um, we really don't wanna limit you in any capacity. And um, yeah, just to, to be able to give you that experience while you're a student here is something that um, I would like for you all to keep in mind. Um, well, I mean, what we do is certainly very, very niche. So if any of you are specifically interested in visual arts and design, again, that is what we do. And while Columbus, Ohio, I don't think jumps to the top of people's minds when they think arts and design. I mean, let's face it, they think New York and LA and Chicago. And I personally have lived in some of those cities, expensive cities. Um, Columbus is home to the third largest population of working fashion designers. We're the home to multiple Fortune 500 companies, each with their own marketing and branding uh, teams that they're looking to recruit for. So Columbus, Ohio is a really um, actually young and exciting place to live and start your creative career. I'll say about Rutgers, um, I think what makes us unique is our location because having a big public university with kind of that like traditional college experience with the sports and the clubs and the over 100 majors and research and everything like that, but being just outside of New York City, it's actually unique. So um, that's a, uh, the location is really cool. And then um, as Ellen touched on with Columbus, it's not as affordable as Columbus, but it's more affordable than living in New York. <laughs> We're still having all the benefits of you can commute to New York for internships in just 45 minutes on the train. So you kind of have the best of both worlds there where you can have that kind of like traditional college experience being in like a suburban atmosphere and like the college town atmosphere, but then being able to just hop on a train and do an internship in midtown Manhattan, you know, in 45 minutes on the train and commute. So you can kind of experience both. And I think that's what makes Rutgers really cool and unique. So um, that would be the main thing I would point out. So for Humboldt State University, some few key things that I can leave you with is we have something called a ditch the desk policy, where 50% of all of our classes are actually held outside. So whether you're a dance or English major, you're an environmental science major, or you're undeclared, all of our classes are actually 
outside. So if we expect you, if society expects you to be able to think outside the box, we got to get you outside the four walls of the classroom. And so that's something that's very unique to us. And 67% of all of our students actually do a dual major. So if you're interested in two things and you want to have your cake and eat it too, come meet us where the redwoods meet the sea. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for um, to all of our participants here today for uh, letting us know more about your institutions. They all sound fantastic. Um, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And we encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions that are happening right after this one. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings and yesterday's panel recordings at strivescan.com slash calsoap. That's strivescan.com slash calsoap. Thank you so much. Have a great evening.